Hi, I'm Elizabeth Crone, Senior Ecologist at Harvard Forest. So this project is a study of trends in butterflies in the state of Massachusetts mostly. Um, we're look, working with a volunteer group called the Massachusetts Butterfly Club to look at trends over the past 20 years so members of the club report their butterfly sightings to a listserv on the internet and they manage the data and we're looking for trends for which species are increasing and which species are decreasing. We're doing two things, we're analyzing these data compiled by the Massachusetts Butterfly Club and we're also doing studies on two species of checker spot butterflies. One is the Harris's checker spot that's out flying today and it's thought to be decreasing because it's at the southern limit of its uh, geographic distribution. So if things are getting warmer, this is where we'd see changes. And the other species that's not yet out flying this year is the Baltimore checker spot which is believed to be increasing, not because of climate or perhaps partly because of climate, it's towards the northern end of its range, but mostly because it's switched from its native host plant to an invasive species, Plantago lanceolata, narrowleaf plantain, that's much more common than its native host plant. So this is the host plant of the Harris's checker spot. The host plant is where the butterflies lay their eggs, and then the little caterpillars when they hatch will eat what they're laid on. And then as adults, the butterflies fly around and they collect nectar from lots of different species. But often butterflies are specialists like the Harris's checker spot and only lay their eggs on one or a few species. We expect butterflies to be sensitive to two kinds of changes that are going on here in New England. One is climate change that you've probably all heard about where butterflies are very sensitive to changes in the temperature because they get their heat from the outside, not internally like we do. Uh, we're also interested in whether butterflies are affected by changes in land use because most butterflies live in open meadows like this one and the amount of forest in New England has been increasing over the past century. Back when I lived in Montana, we used to think about conservation as big, wide, open spaces. It's all about open spaces. But here in New England, a lot of conservation happens in the midst of places where people live and work. And one thing that I think we can do a lot for conservation by slightly changing how we manage these kinds of open spaces to allow them to have not just the grass you see here, but also some wildflowers and potential habitat for different species. So this is the way we manage roadsides, the way we manage our lawns, the way we manage small public open spaces. Well, for most species uh, that we're interested in and that live in these meadows, um, mowing any time during the summer it, or even the spring is bad because you're knocking down the host plant and killing larvae. So you basically need to wait until the fall and do one mow uh, in sort of late September or October. And the, the idea there is not to keep a nice groomed lawn, but to, to kill any uh, trees that come up to keep the space open. And then the other sort of more scientific question that we're curious about is if we just have these little bits of habitat in the midst of towns and cities, is that a place where a population can persist or do we need larger spaces or more connected spaces? 